Hey, how's it going everyone? Sorry I'm a little bit late, but welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna continue where we left off in the last one. And so in the last video, we programmed this little cool drawing using Python. In this video, we're gonna do a couple more cool visualizations of trees in Python. If you missed it in the last video, I do have a contest going on right now. So if you tag me in a tweet or an Instagram post or story with some sort of cool tree visualization that you programmed, uh, I will selectively pick ones that I really like and donate trees on your behalf. So if you participate in that, that would be awesome. All right, let's do some coding. So let's try to make a more realistic looking tree. And to do that, we'll be using recursion. So basically, if we think about how a tree actually looks, you know, you have the main like trunk and that branches off. And then each of those branches has a bunch of branches and so on. And this perfectly like kind of emulates what we use recursion for. So I'm gonna show some stuff on the screen. Basically, this is a simple branch. Uh, we go straight, then right, then straight, then back, then left, then back, then back. Uh, that's a single branch. If we keep repeating more and more branches, uh, we'll get something that looks more and more like a tree. So now we're gonna branch twice. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit better. Let's branch a third time. Cool. And it's pretty sweet, like with just me changing one number, we're getting a more sophisticated branching thing. Okay, so maybe that looks more like a tree in your eyes. I think I started to see it. That looks like uh, I'm in Boston. It looks like a tree maybe in the winter. No uh, leaves or anything. And let's go one more layer deep. Okay, so what is going on? Well, we have this tree function. And basically what this tree function is doing is going straight, then branching right and left. And on each of those branches, it also calls the tree function. So each of those branches do the same thing. They go straight, then right and left. And it's gonna keep doing that until this depth hits the branch count. So this is called our base condition. So as I change this number, this branch count, we got more sophisticated looking trees because it was allowed to branch more until it hit that base condition. And once it hits the base condition, kind of the recursion unravels and it eventually just completes execution because no more recursive calls of tree are being made. The reason the branches were getting smaller is because each time I called this tree, uh, we multiplied this shrink factor in, which made it 80% length of what it was before. And doing this kind of makes it look more like a tree, I guess, looks. Okay, let's move into what I did for a more impressive looking recursive tree. So in my GitHub, I have a file called Re Realistic Tree Recursive, and that looks like this. So it starts off brown, it gets a little bit skinnier, then it turns green like we have nice leaves, and it is doing some crazy stuff branching. It's going really fast too. Even just comparing to what we, I just showed, it looks more authentic already. And the big reason for why it looks a little bit more realistic is that there's some randomness happening. It's not always branching the same way. Like trees are not perfect. So you kind of have to add a little bit of randomness to your recursion to make it look more tree-like. So that's kind of what's going on in here. I'm not gonna go through this whole animation because it takes a while, but uh, basically it's randomly selecting whether it should branch, but it's not changing too, too much otherwise. How did I change the code up from base recursive to get kind of to what you see here? Well, one thing I did was add more branches. So now instead of branching twice, it branches four times. Each time it branches, it turns a little bit, it's not a severe branch, but I do a lot more. So as you see, there's a branch count of seven. Same string factor of eight, 0 0.8, 80% each uh, new branch. One of the key things here is this randomness. So basically I generate a random number and if it's greater than 0.33, so this random number is between zero and one, so about 66% of the time, it will be above 0.33. Uh, that case, I do the recursion. I continue with the recursion. But if it's less than 0.33, I break early. And then I have my normal base case here. And I kind of reverse the order where it counts downwards and uh, as opposed to upwards in the base recursive one. The reason I did that was I use the depth here to decide how thick my branch should be. So if you see that animation again, it starts off a bit thicker and then it gets skinnier, just kind of like branches do. So this is depth seven and it's also equal to width seven. 
uh, then it gets width 6, width 5, so it looks more authentic because you're smartly using this depth in your turtle width as well. Once you're a certain depth into the tree, you go from a brown color to a green color, so this helped me do that. One little secret thing is because random.random, .random, if you run this every time, you might get really unlucky on the first two branches. You might get a number that's less than 0 0.33, so the whole tree would fail. I basically seed it, so this makes the randomness always behave the same. It's, it's a random iteration, but I can like always reproduce those random results. So I seed it to a random value, and I basically just seeded it. I played around and tested this and seeded it to a value that I liked. All right, for the next part of this video, we're going to switch things up a bit and actually show you, you can use Python to create really cool looking paintings. I first did this project for one of my classes I was taking as a master student at MIT. It was a class called Advanced Computational Photography. And, you know, we did all sorts of cool image manipulation throughout the class. But ultimately, my final project was this painterly rendering. So the basic process is you take some sort of cool photo, you work some Python magic, and then ultimately you output some sort of rendering of that same photo that looks like a painting. And so the first step in this is that we need to find some cool photos. And because this is a Team Trees video, I specifically want some cool photos of trees. Uh, so for that, we're gonna go to this Instagram photographer, Kyle Rojo's uh, page. His uh, tag is krojo, so if you like what you see, you should definitely check him out. Uh, but he has all sorts of cool nature shots, and one thing I particularly like about his work is that he includes a lot of the great state of New Hampshire, my uh, original stomping grounds. So if you take a photo like this, you got some beautiful trees, we're gonna turn this into a painting. The algorithm for this works as follows. So we have our photo, and we also take a image of a brushstroke, and basically what we do is that for that photo, we randomly sample points all around the image. So each time we sample a point, we look at the color of that point, and then on a blank canvas, we draw that brush stroke you just saw in that spot of that same color. And we just keep repeating this like thousands of times. So eventually, by the time we're done, we've sampled every point in the photo, and we have a like painting that resembles the photo. So this is the basic process, but we can kind of keep improving upon this. Um, one thing we can do is in the areas of high contrast, uh, we can draw smaller brush strokes. So that will bring more clarity to our image. The next thing we can do is we can actually start looking at our image and we can use image processing techniques to see the curvature of the edges in our image. And so once we can find those curvatures, we can orientate our brush strokes. So we're doing the same process, but we can orientate the brush strokes in such a way that they more closely mirror the actual image. Once you take all these factors and bring them together, you get some really cool paintings. So I was playing around with this a lot, and here's some of the artwork I created. With that, I'm gonna end the video here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this stuff. Uh, definitely get involved in the contest I mentioned at the beginning, and also definitely donate to Team Trees. That'd be super awesome. It's so close to getting to 20 million. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button, and also throw this video a big like. I'm gonna be back with some of my traditional kind of long tutorials, um, probably by the end of the month. The next video is gonna be a another Python Pandas data science library video. So make sure to check back around the end of the month so you don't miss that. But uh, yeah, that's all we're gonna do in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.